So you decided you want to get an iPad for yourself and there is the choice. You have the basic, very decent price. iPad 9 seems to be a great value. The so-called student iPad can give you all you want. But on the other hand, Apple just released the brand new M1 iPad Air 5 and that thing, even though almost twice the price, which seems kind of outrageous compared to iPad 9, but it actually offers more capabilities. That new design, which actually gets you to the future compared to the iPad 9, which is kind of old. Apple Pencil second generation, which is a little bit nicer. You know, on top of that, you have other improvements over iPad 9, which improvements specifically? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in the comparison between iPad 9 and iPad Air 5, even though it seems outrageous to a certain degree to actually compare these two. Well, actually not really, because maybe, you know, you have the money, the budget for iPad 9, but on the other hand, you think that iPad Air 5 is actually worth paying extra. And well, for you, maybe it will actually be worth. We'll see that in the comparison. But I also have a very important information considering iPads. If you have about 500 bucks, just make sure to stay till the end of the video because there's another iPad that I talked about my other videos that's, that will probably give you even better value than these two. So if you're in the budget of about 500, then make sure to stay till the end when I tell also about this alternative directly sold from Apple, but now direct comparison between iPad Air 5 and iPad 9. So to sum things up, to you know give you all the details you need, iPad 9 is a great iPad when it comes to, you know, day-to-day -day usage. It gives you all it, it's supposed to actually give you. It gives you four capabilities of iPad OS, which is gonna run very smoothly, very decently, because it still has fairly powerful A13 processor. On top of that, the display is still pretty sharp. You have Touch ID on the home button. Again, that home button gives you that older design, and that older design also gives you worse hardware when it comes to the speakers, for example, since you have only, just like on the iPad mini 5, two speakers coming from only one side. So that's a little bit of a downside. But on the other hand, you know, you have that cheaper construction that's easier, you know, to repair, for example, when you drop that iPad, because it doesn't have the laminated display, which means that the glass and the screen, they are not glued together like they are on the iPad Air and any other iPad, which is easier to repair, but also it costs you when it comes to the screen quality. So the display is not as colorful. You know, when you write with Apple Pencil, it feels that you're writing on a glass and not specifically on the screen. There is a little bit of gap between the screen and the glass and that's basically what non-laminated display on iPad 9 is. It also is not as colorful compared to the iPad Air 5 because it doesn't have the P3 color gamut which basically enables the display, which gives the display better capability to display all the colors. It makes it more accurate and overall better. But with that being said, the display is still sharp, the iPad is still functional, it has great battery. If you actually watch any battery test, iPad, the base iPad, including iPad 9, is always pretty much on top. It has very solid battery for the iPad. But again, compared to the M1 iPad Air 5, you're losing few things. Well, what things specifically? Well, the first obviously is that new beautiful design, which arguably looks better, is more efficient when it comes to day-to-day -day usage, just gives you better feeling of the iPad. You feel like you're running something from the current times, from the future, and not necessarily, you know, an older product, which iPad 9 may seem like. Uh, also, with iPad Air, you're gonna get way more power compared to the iPad 9 because of that M1 chip. So if you're a heavier user, if you multitask a lot between apps, if you just keep opening them, you wanna play every possible game, although iPad 9 is gonna be pretty good for gaming too, but iPad Air 5 is way more powerful. So if you are into power, speed, uh, pushing your iPad hard, then again, iPad Air will be great. Also will be better when it comes to audio since it has stereo speakers coming from both sides. They are not as good as iPad Pro has, but still they are very decent. Again, the display, as I said, is laminated and overall slightly better when it comes to the quality. So you gotta decide basically if these things are actually worth paying extra compared to the iPad 9. Because, well, the conclusion is simple. If you are gonna use, if you don't care about tech, if you're gonna just use your iPad for the base, basic needs, 
like watching some videos, for example, with your headphones or stuff like that, uh, scribbling something with Apple Pencil, reading PDFs, maybe your main computer is actually a computer, a laptop, a MacBook, a Windows laptop, whatever, and you just wanna buy iPad because you think it will add something to your life, make it more convenient, better in some ways when it comes to you know reading uh, university books, maybe playing some mobile games, then iPad 9 is pretty much all you need. Like this is the iPad for most people, and considering the current capabilities of iPod OS, like iPod Air 5 doesn't really give you that much beyond that extra convenience from, for example, magnetically attached Apple Pencil second generation like the iPad Pro. So like there is that. Uh, the design is nicer, the overall screen looks better. But if you are not a techie person, then pretty much iPad 9 is all you need. But if you want some more, if you like that newer design, if you think you're gonna take advantage of the power, extra speaker, maybe USB-C port that iPad Air has, and you just like that device more, you like the colors and stuff like that, then it's a pretty good product as well. But iPad Air, as I said, is twice, pretty much, twice the price of the iPad 9 and it doesn't necessarily bring twice the amount of value compared to that iPad. So if you have a spare cash, yeah, then iPad Air is definitely gonna be a great choice. But there are some limitations to the iPad Air as well. You know, the storage is still 64 gigabytes, just like on iPad 9. On top of that, you still have 60 hertz screen. So even though you have all that power of the M1 chip inside iPad Air, it's still gonna, it's still not gonna feel as fast, as snappy as iPad Pro, which has promotion display. So there are downsides to that as well. And that extra power may not feel that much of a boost compared to, for example, iPad Pro. But speaking of iPad Pro, on the beginning of the video, I promise you that if you have 500 bucks, I'll give you a recommendation of buying some great iPad for that price. And well, I've been repeating myself in many of my videos lately, but this is actually such a good deal that you gotta talk about it. Like Apple refurbish section has the 2018 iPad Pro for 500 bucks. And that thing offers you new design, offers you that promotion display that iPad Air 5 does not have, offers you better overall speaker quality. And yes, it's slightly less po more powerful compared to the iPad Air 5, like obviously, but as I said previously, with the current capabilities, limited capabilities of iPad OS, that 2018 iPad Pro may be actually a steal for you. And like if you have that 500 bucks and you won't have full iPad experience, then it's not only gonna be cheaper than Air, but also gives you something like that promotion and extra speakers that iPad Air 5 does not have. And if you wanna have more storage and you don't wanna pay way more than for basic generation of iPad Air, then you have that refurbished 2020 iPad Pro, which is like the same exact price as iPad Air. And that one offers everything that the 2018 iPad Pro offers, but on top of that, even more RAM, even more storage, 128 gigabytes, which is gonna be pretty, pretty, pretty great. So that's basically it when it comes to the comparison. Again, if you are into just basic iPad usage, iPad 9 is definitely for you. And it actually goes beyond basic usage because let's face it, that silicon, that processor inside this is still pretty powerful. Hey, I was running my YouTube channel from my iPad mini 5, which is Apple A12 processor compared to the A13 on the iPad 9. And like, I wasn't complaining, I was still rocking, you know, the older design, first generation Apple Pencil, and I never really complained and I think I did, it didn't lack any power, it didn't lack any capabilities beyond that of limitations of iPad OS. But like, other than that, the experience was still pretty good and I had no problems whatsoever. Only when I got iPad Pro, I noticed some differences. But hey, you're not getting iPad Pro if you're looking for iPad 9, so like, it doesn't really matter and it's still gonna give you great capabilities. It's just when you wanna go for more, then you can consider iPad Air 5 or those refurbished iPad Pros, which I sincerely recommend because these are great deal. But again, iPad Air 5 doesn't give you twice the amount of value, but it costs twice the amount of money. So like, if you value that newer design, that M1 chip, there is some reason that you actually wanna go for iPad Air, then yes, you can go for it. I mean, who's, who's to forbid you? But for most people, iPad 9 is gonna be great unless you really don't like that older design, which is totally justifiable. And if you're still not sure, make sure to let me know in the comments. I'll gladly help with your use case. Since you know, these things can get a little bit complicated. If you like the video and the content, you may make sure to press the like button, smash that subscribe button. Hope you did enjoy, hope it was helpful. Until next time.